morning everyone just about to start a crazy house team league match another match it's a monday morning just getting ready for work here in sydney and uh, uh it's not that i couldn't get up yesterday for the elite crazy house arena the problem is i couldn't get to sleep so i was a total wreck the whole day but here my teammate on board three is Chubba Chub playing with the black pieces and his opponent is PKR5025 so and this is a 7 plus 7 two game match because it is board 3 and it starts on board 1 with 5 plus 5 increments one extra minute one extra second every every board down to board 6 so here we have an early knight exchange queen comes back and pawn at e4 seems to be the first move I'm unfamiliar with I assume the idea is just to stop knight f3 or to make it a little bit awkward to develop the knight on f3 so perhaps in this case the bishop should come out first bishop c4 seems quite reasonable Think about knocking the bishop away with knight at d6 and then developing via g6, bishop g7. Uh, going for an early d5 push. Mm, I don't think I would hesitate too much going e6. Although actually still g6 is worth considering because you see how the knight on e3 gets in the way of the typical pawn at h6 ideas. And then... You can even follow it up with bishop g7 and then h6 yourself. So there are actually two moves that I consider playing e6 and g6. If d takes e6, you'd be quite happy to trade queens and then just bishop takes back. So as usual, there's a little bit of a delay if you are catching the stream this morning. I just saw the finisher and Legion Destroyer had a match. I ha haven't checked out the games yet, but I see the results were one all between those two. Uh, sometimes you've got to watch out for a bishop b5 check in response to e6. And then... We haven't actually lost a pawn. I'm familiar with uh, John Lee. Uh, Jusugi matches where white takes a pawn and then he goes c6 and then he takes another pawn on c6. But here, you can just answer pawn c6 and after the queen trade. You do have to be careful in that case about a white pawn landing back on c7 because then the threat of mate on d8 by replacing the queen means that you'd have to lose the knight on b8 because there's no good defense. Oh, actually, depending on which way white takes back, you may have a queen at a5 check. So just anticipating bishop b5 check, or what else could white do here? Don't seem to be too many reasonable moves for white. He doesn't want to bring the knight out to h3 because he just got e takes d5 and bishop h3. I could leave the pawn there and still go bishop c4, I suppose, but then the knight has the option to drop on b6. Well, then it will be interesting if knight b6 and then d takes e6. How do you respond to that? Trade queens, maybe even f e6. Hard to say exactly without working it out. Knight at f4, alright. It's a bit unexpected. Now it doesn't come with a tempo here because the knight on e3 is already well placed to guard g2. It's one of the whole points to PKR's opening. And we did see this sort of position a few times in the recent 1-0 matches that I was commentating on. A 
so white has a free hand what to do he's just choosing the right time when he wants to open the game up with dtx e6 of course it's not necessary right now He already has enough pieces defending the pawn on d5. But if he takes, yeah, you got to be careful. You don't want to bring the knight away too early because g2 hangs. So I'm quite unfamiliar with this move, pawn at e4, and it seems to be working out quite well for black so far. I'd actually be expecting PKR to play something similar with the black pieces in the next game against e4. Okay, so challenging the black the advanced knight on f4 for black so here it's a choice do you take on e2 do you take on d5 uh, there is a third option to sack on g2 then replace the pawn straight away with pawn at f3 There is a bit of a danger here that the e-file will suddenly open and because white has a knight in hand. And if you can manage to drill a hole in f7, then there's some danger for black. And, but here you can respond de6 with a queen trade, f takes e2 check, and you'd assume the bishop would have to come back, which gives black some more options in defense via bishop takes e6. So, good evening everyone in Europe, if you're watching. Knight g f4. So here white is just slowly building up the pressure on e6. And you, you would assume black should take on e2, otherwise this knight escapes as well. You don't want both the knights escaping when you've done a fork like this. Oh, just evening up the material imbalance. If the queen takes, suddenly this pawn that was so looking looking so good before an e4 is hanging. And not an f3 check. Doesn't seem to have a lot of purpose. King d1 and then you still got to worry about the threat on e4. Uh, if he takes d5... Bishop takes e f uh, d5 looks good, and then there are uh, two pieces hitting e4. Hmm. What else could black do here? So PKR's made a uh, comment in the confession booth. He says, I feel despite black's pressure, he hasn't developed at all, so I should be all right. It's actually looking a lot better now for white with the uh, mobility of the pieces than it did, say, five or six moves ago. And the move I really wasn't sure about was knight at f4 in the first place. Maybe there was a better square for the knight, like b6 or d6, or just keep it for a while till you work out what's going on. Okay, so how to deal with queen takes e4 and all the pressure on e6 as well. I haven't found an easy answer so far. King d1. Actually, king d1. Maybe you don't want to go that way because it's running into the, the queen on the d file. Perhaps better to go king f1. And then... It may be to black's advantage to trade here, although 
Still not quite sure how to respond to bishop takes d5. I mean, a queen sack looks desperate, but it may have some merits, because if knight takes, then there's not many pieces guarding g g2 and h3. So it's worth looking at a, a queen sack. So if knight takes d5, pawn at g2, bishop at h3, king g3, bishop d6 check, pawn at f4. All you need in that case is another pawn on h4 for checkmate. Hmm. You can do it via bishop h3 first, pawn at g2, bishop takes, king takes. And then what do you have left? Only a bishop and a pawn. Morning, Elder Bava. Glad to see you here again. So, you can tell me, guys, in the chat, who do you favor so far? White or black? My teammate in the team league is Chubba Chub. Yeah, I, I feel like Queen takes d5 is just a pawn short. Uh, it's very close to a mate after bishop d6 check in the end. And then if a pawn blocks on f4, you can you can even sack the bishop, and white would be forced to respond king takes f4. So the king's drawn out a long way. Unfortunately, you've only got a pawn left, and the king's got too many escape routes in that case. So he's going this way to... We'll try and force the knight to come back, and then queen takes d5 has got to be good for black. So I think PKR should be brave and take with the king. And then perhaps the idea is queen g5 check. But you wouldn't say it's an important factor to make white waste a pawn, because... He has a lot of pawns in hand, four pawns in hand now, after king takes g2. So, not exactly sure what to do, even after queen g5 check, pawn at g3. Hmm. I don't know where this is headed. <laughs> Take with the king. Queen h4 check. It's, it's only a check. King g2. So I think Piqué has made all the right decisions so far. And uh, although the queen sack was close, I still feel like it came up a bit short, and that means I think white always had the advantage. Uh, so after knight at f3, king f1, I couldn't find anything seriously. Better for black, more testing. Um, so, once the bishop reached d5, there's no easy way to guard the pawn on e4. And, and if it falls, especially with a check, then everything is crumbling. Elder Barber says, now I take white, yeah. <laughs> but if you take white now, then you'd also would have taken white three moves ago, un unless there was something I missed. The queen sack on d5 looked like the only dangerous option, but couldn't find it. So it looks like PKR is going to take this one. Because again, you can throw in a check if he blocks knight h4. You could try to trade queens. And that might be the best you could hope for. Could you even respond queen g4 with king f1? And then you're still defending g2 well enough. So I think Darkness23 in the chat has a match coming up quite soon. Against Duvid. It looks like in about 24 hours from now. Queen g4 check. Yeah, about the best black, black could do here. and Bring the knight back with check, possibly. Maybe he wants to sack all these pieces with knight takes h2, check if king f1. Alright, so you'd, you'd have to expect knight h4 because there's nothing else really black can play for. Hmm. 
Yeah, so Peaky is just reinforcing what I was saying in the chat. Pete bought an E4 he hadn't seen before and he found it to be interesting and disruptive. I just think you have to spend a little bit more effort defending the pawn on e4 if you're going to launch it there so early. So I wonder if he's going to go king f1, queen takes, king takes. Actually, that's not so good because queen at f3. King f1, queen takes, knight takes, also not so good. Hmm. All right, so what is the response? Is perhaps white has to find a way to drop the rook on h1 and then suddenly counter with bishop takes f7, check. So perhaps he, he could take with the knight after king f1, queen at g2, king e1, queen takes rook check, let's say bishop at g1, actually there's a knight f3 and rook at e1 mate, he does have to be very careful, and while he's working this out, his time is under one minute, which of course for some people is enough for a whole game to be played. <laughs> but not so easy when you're defending and you have to find the precise uh, king walking moves. So yeah, perhaps after all, king takes is better. Yeah, it does look like he's getting mated after knight takes e2. Dead ban in the chat saying bishop was better to block on g3. Well, at the, at the moment, that's hard to tell because... Every move is coming with check. So what about king d2 after queen f3 check? So in that case, the counterattack is strong. And queen takes f2 is possible. But it's only a pawn. Oh, what? He's dropped a rook. Maybe he was worried about getting cut off this way via bishop b4 check. And queen takes f2. But if he blocked on e2, well, if bishop b4 check, he'd probably have an escape route out to b3. But this is made in one. It's suddenly a turnaround. What? <laughs> this is incredible stuff. I mean, Chubba Chub probably feels <laughs> quite <laughs> proud of himself right now because it looks like a, this whole long combination, like a 12 move combination, starting with all these sacks out on h3, but I felt like white was still better after king d2. Queen takes, something blocks. If, some, if pawn at e3 check, then king c3. If bishop b4 check first, then pawn 2 c3 gives the king an escape route via c2 and b3. So, of course, that's not a definitive analysis. It's just my th first thoughts. But uh, the real Ganes is in the chat saying knight f4. Oh, yeah, so after losing the rook on h1 with check, it was a forced mate, it seemed. Uh, so, so what happens on king d2? That's the real question. Was white still getting mated after king d2? Alright, so second game, that's going to require some more analysis. Second game, we have d4, d5, white is doing the fianchetto, so super solid setup after castling. So if you've just joined, it's only a two game match. It will be ending in about 10 to 15 minutes when I'll be running off to work. So nothing too unexpected so far. Uh, but interesting that the knight's jumping up to b5 to trade for the bishop. And sometimes you see black throw in a, a little prophylactic move like a6, just to avoid knight b5. 
so here typically f6 is quite a reasonable defense for black because then the bishop has zero moves and can be traded off at the right time by perhaps knight at g6 or knight at g5 if that square is vacant later on. So in the meantime, the black knight is well placed on e4. And once you have this formation, um, and it's very easy to make, but what do you do now? That's the hard question. Can you just take here on c4? So yeah, I mean, I have to congratulate Chubba Chub for his enterprising play, even though, to be honest, I didn't think it was working the whole way through, and I still don't think it's working if white was a little bit more careful with the king walking. So d5 the idea? Can you just take again and replace a pawn, or just ignore it and try and trap the bishop over here? I think well, that's also a very good response for black. So our team, Pethidine, is, is what currently 7-0 with one game to go, plus another couple of boards. I saw you also had a good result, 2-0 over Colwem. All right, so you would assume Bishop takes e4 next, and oh, you diagonal pieces. So sacking on h7, eventually the king is going to hide on h8. And you're probably going to need a heavy piece to make a threat. There's also a queen takes d6 after you get rid of the knight as a threat. And black's counterplay is via h takes g3. And then opening up the f file at the right time. But of course he has to be careful trading rooks because... White's got a pawn at g6, and a rook will be very useful for white also. So, compared to the opening, this is suddenly a very dangerous double-edged position where both sides have attacking chances. Because if black here plays some defensive move, then suddenly the other bishop is taking on g5. So I think he, he should... I didn't even realize white has a knight in hand after the bishop's sack. It may be also useful to place the knight first on g5. Because then there's a fork on e6. So bishop takes... I wouldn't even hesitate if I was chubba chub here. I'd just take on h7 check. I guess he's also looking at queen takes d6. But no, he's done it, considering his uh, sacrifices were so successful last game. I didn't think he would take so long. But it was kind of desperation in the previous game. There wasn't a lot of choice for Chubba Chub. So, knight at g5 check. I mean, it is possible for black to sack the queen and then defend the square g6 perhaps bishop bishop at g6 and then the white bishop maybe it could come back and take h4 but there's no there's no instant checkmating ideas if the bishop is on g6 but now he's given up the material this way knight takes e6 to follow and then yeah relying on the counter attack via h takes g3 this is going to be a, a close one Still hard to tell because white is material down. He's sacked a piece for a pawn. Well, actually two pieces, but he's, he can get one back next move. Not a lot of choices here for white. I don't know what he's thinking about. He should just take on e6. I mean, you'd like the e-pawn to disappear and play queen h5 check, of course, but it's not so easy to bring the queen closer to the king at the moment. So yeah, our Pethidine is saying 7-0 makes a round win because it's first to six and a half. 
And I'm not sure if there's any count back at the end, but yeah, of course you try and collect as many points for your team as you can. But considering our miserable team results in the first three rounds, I don't expect we'll be involved in any countbacks at the finish. All right, he hasn't picked up the free bishop. Too scared about a counterattack. Maybe he was afraid of pawn and h2 first. But I didn't see that was going anywhere. I was even looking at knight takes e6, h takes g3, knight takes d8. And then bishop take bishop at h2 check. And then that did look dangerous because there's a pawn at g2 and knight at h4 to follow. So if you can't grab the queen, then you'd have to defend maybe via just f takes g3. Uh, Ganesh is saying pawn at h6 is also possible. So instead of... Instead of g takes h4... Yeah, not something I considered. I would assume black would drop a bishop somewhere on the diagonal to cover g7. But yeah, I had to count the pieces carefully because if h6 g3 is coming, then I was just assuming in most position white would have to take back via f6 g3. Because bishop at h2 was too strong a counterattack. And the move order here. So g, g takes h4. The idea is to slow down black's attack. So that bishop takes h3. Yeah, so he's saying not, not necessarily better than knight takes e6, which was the obvious choice. So this bishop takes h3, although obviously there aren't many pieces defending g2 on the white side. The only piece that's effective is the queen or, or the rook at h1, which black doesn't have at the moment. And you notice, if it's necessary, even the queen is covering h2. Uh, and black also has to be careful about sacks on either d7 or f8, which pick up material. Now the rook at the moment is not enough to mate because if queen takes rook at h7, king g8, the pawn f7 forces black to sack the queen. Well, unless there's a rook h8 check, king takes, knight takes f7 check. But then white would only have a queen and pawns in hand. So if queen and h check, king takes f7, the queen is going to be misplaced in the corner. So even if bishop at c7, I, I don't think queen takes rook is mating. So Ganez is calling for bishop at c7 because it makes some serious danger on h2. And that way, yeah, I mean, queen takes rook, it's either a win or a loss, but it, it's looking more like a loss to me. Even if you get the check with the knight takes f7, you have pawn at h7, but then the king is getting away. And a lot of pawns in hand, surely there's a way to hide. Even if you play, I was thinking about king f8, queen at g8, king e7. I guess white can promote in that case. But yeah, bishop at c7 did look killing for black. So he, the other option is to take the knight. Now, of course, if the bishop were on c7, that's not possible because it's just a mate in two. And here, with the bishop on e7, it's less effective, effective because it's not pointing in the direction of the king. And 
there's an obvious threat here that Chubba Chub has of knight at g6, mate in two. Yeah, even recapture with the knight, knight takes f8, I was looking at two, and allow the knight, so covering h7, and then knight f7 check, king g8, yeah, and that way the rook at h8 kind of get, get stuck in the corner, and you don't have a queen in hand, so... Yeah, knight, knight takes f8 may be even better for black, because then you don't have to calculate so much. But this way, black is in some serious danger. Probably has to play some defensive move like bishop at g6. I mean, you, you'd look at the check first to see if there's some way you can drop a piece that might be useful with tempo. So, pawn at h2, and then you'd be looking at some sort of a bishop check but you wouldn't want to waste a bishop if it's useful if it's more useful on g6 in defense and then you'd be looking for force mates after a queen trade uh, let's say with the bishop on g6 can we find a force mate uh, let's say for instance queen takes rook a takes d8 Or perhaps better to come back and take on h3. And the other idea is to, to put a knight on the board, let's say knight at e5 to threaten. Oh, that was an anticlimactic finish. So perhaps PKR saw all the holes around the king and just thought, oh, there's no way to defend because my opponent can take a queen on the next turn. But bishop at g6 was surely surviving. And I was looking at knight at e5, making a threat here. And the idea there is that if black has to play a move like pawn at h7 in defense, then you can trade or swap queens first with the threat of trading on g6. And there's no easy way for black to defend using a knight, so all the knight drops would be covered if you answer bishop at g6 with knight at e5. Yeah, so just in this position here, I was anticipating bishop at g6 as the best defense. Uh, I wonder if it's possible to take the knight also, bishop takes g g5. Uh, Gane is asking if pawn h2 and rook takes h2 is anything. Rook takes f2. So rook takes f2, you get a long sequence of checks. Pawn at g3. So the idea is that the king can't take on h3 because it allows queen takes d7 check. Ah, uh, pk. Ah, very unfortunate finish in the second game. And I thought you made all the right decisions in the first game. Except for one, except for the critical decision where you moved your king in back to the first rank, and I thought king d2. I mean, I might be completely wrong. You might have been getting checkmated anyway, but I think I would have played exactly like you did in the first game, except except not king goes back to e1, which was the fatal mistake. Um, but here, yeah, bishop at c7, uh, Guinness saw it first in the chat instead of bishop e7, and the difference is simply you're pointing at the square h2 and you're, you're threatening checkmates by dropping pawns all over the white king. So uh, that was a huge difference, bishop at c7 instead of bishop at e7. And here, yeah, so I was still looking at uh, rook takes f2 when the king is here, pawn at g3, king takes g3. And then you have to count the pieces carefully to see if black has anything, because he he wants to force white to take the bishop with the king. I was even looking at moves like knight at h1, still with an extra knight in hand. But then the f-file is open, so the king is running out this way. And the other idea is maybe even knight at g1 to follow, and you're trying to force the king onto the d-file, so then queen takes d7 is also check. So that's very interesting, pawn at h2 and rook takes f2 check. Mm. 
because in that case there would be how many pawns in how many pawns left two pawns a bishop two knights so one pawn bishop two knights after king takes g3 and i wonder if knight at h1 can the king step step back now there's too many too many diagonals so what about king f4 <laughs> oh but then this bishop takes g5 check at the very least i mean it was certainly worth a go pawn at h2 and rook takes f2 check knight at e4 check is also possible to to lure the neither way i guess the idea is bishop takes h4 check It's very likely that that's a force mate for black if the king's out in the open here. Or at least you win the queen back with check in, in many lines. So I have to run to work very soon, but there were two very interesting games uh, from both players. Unfortunately, PKR didn't find the best defense in game one or game two, and it was a win to Chubba Chubb, so... Congratulations, teammates. High five. <laughs> uh, so our team is now 8-0. And perhaps quickly, just before I go, I'll take a look at the current standings. Or if that's not working, at least the pairings. So just come back to the browser display. And so the match here is <clears throat> Neil before Zod versus Smooth Smotherers. And currently we have 8-0 because that match was just completed between Chubba Chubb and PKR. And so we still have Fishy Vishy and Pepello to organize a match. Uh, hi, I'm Pot News versus Quartier on board six. And we have lots of matches on the rest of the day and also tomorrow, so stay tuned. Play now, I have to run off to work. I'll be on the iPhone and may maybe play some in the daily arena. Just a couple of games while I'm on the train. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I do have to run off now and hope to stream some of the Crazy House Shield. And it's always a matter of if I wake up in time. It is very early in the morning for me tomorrow. I think it starts at 4 p.m. UTC Monday. So if you're up for that, there's usually at least a few hundred players in the Crazy House Shield. It's a very long event, six hours, three plus two. Otherwise, take care, enjoy your weekend if it's still your Sunday. Otherwise, have a good week, everyone else. See you soon.